In Dawn on the Coast, Dawn goes back to California for two weeks of spring break. Two weeks? What school gives kids two weeks for spring break? <laughs> Argofon Book Review, Argofon Book Review. I was going to start this review with my usual joke about how author Anne Martin has clearly never been to California, but as it turns out, this book has a different author. It was written by Jan Carr, who mostly writes Disney books, and picture books, and Disney picture books. Hi, Jan. Congrats on being the series' first ghostwriter. Also, curse you, Jan, because now I have to mention who the author is for the next 100-plus babysitter's books. We start with a babysitter's club sleepover, where the girls watch scary movies together. They let the six-year-old watch movies with them, which is not a very responsible thing for babysitters to do, uh, whatever. Next, we have Dawn flying to California. Airport security wasn't a huge mess in the 1980s, so Dawn can show up at the airport five minutes before takeoff, no problem. I'm super jealous. The flight ends up being a disaster, because Dawn has the worst stewardess ever. The stewardess is distracted by a hot guy, so she forgets to give Dawn a drink, and she forgets to give Dawn headphones, and she gives Dawn's vegetarian meal to somebody else, and she gives Dawn a milk packet instead of real milk! <laughs> there is like five pages of non-stop complaining about this stewardess, and Dawn is constantly insulting the way the woman looks, which is not really nice of Dawn. On the first day in California, the family goes to Disneyland. Dawn says she wants to visit Fantasyland, New Orleans Square, and Jungle Land. I'm shaking my head at this because Jungle Land is not part of Disneyland. Also, Dad thinks Disneyland is super complicated, so he limits the children to three things each. Come on, Dad! Only three things? Don't be so boring! At five o'clock, Dawn visits her best friend, Sonny Winslow. Surprise! Sunny and two other girls have started a babysitting club called the We Heart Kids Club. Dawn loves the new club because it's a lot more relaxed than the BSC. They don't have officers, and they don't have a bunch of crazy rules that Christy made up. For example, here's Christy's rule about getting new clients. The rule is that you take the client's information, you have to copy it into the club notebook, you need to cross-check it with the schedule, double-check everybody's individual schedule, then assign a babysitter, and then call the client back. And, of course, mark this all in the club notebook. Now with the We Heart Kids Club, it's like this. Hey, uh, somebody wants a babysitter on Thursday? Anybody want the job? Maggie? Okay, great. Maggie will be your babysitter. See what I mean? California babysitters have a much easier system. Dawn goes to the beach with her friends, and Dad strikes up an awkward conversation about Mom and what she's doing. Dawn starts getting conflicted about her life in Connecticut, and the problem gets worse when she babysits her two favorite kids. California is so great! How can Dawn leave here and go back to boring old Connecticut? But if she stays here, then Mom will be all alone, and that's not fair, and Dawn has no idea what to do. She asks her family and friends for help, and big mistake, Dawn. Now they're going to pressure you nonstop until you move to California. The only person who doesn't pressure Dawn is Dad, probably because he's the only one who knows the definition of non-custodial parents. In the end, Dawn decides she needs to go back to Connecticut because she can't abandon her friends, not until they have a backup babysitter to replace her as a series narrator. Besides, Mom needs to be saved from her lame-o boyfriend, the Trip Man. Trip Man's idea of a date is a lecture on humor. No, they didn't see a stand-up comic, they saw a lecture. Some date night. Dawn has a sad goodbye with her California friends, and Dad offers to let all the babysitters visit Cali in Super Special Number 5. On the flight back home, Dawn gets the horrible stewardess again! So she switches seats to get away from that monster woman who has the wrong kind of milk. Whoa, Don, you're getting kind of stressed out here. Maybe you need another two-week vacation? We have a nice ending where all of Don's friends show up to greet her at the airport gate. 
and she knows she made the right decision in staying here. The end. Post-book follow-up? Don's brother Jeff is 10 years old. Notice how Jeff standing up is the same size as Don kneeling down. The book fails to mention that she's gigantically tall. Don loves California because it's laid back and relaxed. I don't want to be mean, but that's wrong. Don is not a laid back person. She's a person who will complain for five pages because she doesn't like the stewardess. Multiple times in the book, Don says she prefers California because Dad's house is neat and organized. He's not a slob like Mom is. That's not something a laid-back person complains about. I like this book, but it has a lot of filler. 10% of the book is postcards. 20% of the book is three chapters dedicated to babysitting jobs in Connecticut. Nowhere near Don and the stuff happening in California. So, you could say that about a third of the book is completely unnecessary. Overall, the book is nice. It was fun to read, but not a lot happened story-wise. The highlight is Dawn's father and brother. They were both interesting, fun characters. And the Alternate Universe Babysitter's Club was a neat idea. Jan did a good job of capturing Dawn's personality. And this feels closer to Book 5 Dawn than Pageant Dawn did. I give Babysitter's Club number 23, Dawn on the Coast, a 9 out of 10.